All right. So just kind of just as promised, we've we've skipped a few sections, sections 5.2 and 5.3. We're not going to cover them in this um, class. That'll be a future topic that you'll cover in um, a future math class. But we're skipping over to like we kind of described at the end of the previous video, the section talking about nonlinear systems of equations in two variables. So that just means that either one or both of the equations given doesn't represent a line. It represents a circle or a parabola or I don't know, some kind of rational function or something. Um, so the graphing, kind of the graph idea would look like maybe one of these guys that I've drawn over here. This is kind of what a nonlinear system would look like. Notice the top one has a circle and a parabola, and they intersect at two points that are kind of outlined there. Um, and then the second one, the one in the middle, it has kind of a rational functions graph, which we've seen before, you know, like 1 over x. You know, the graph of y equals 1 over x looks like that blue guy. And then there's a line going through it and it intersects twice. Something like that is te technically non a nonlinear system. Even though one of those is a line, the other one's not. So we call it a nonlinear system. And then there's a bottom one. It could be a line and a parabola, for example. You know, things like that. That's what we're trying to solve. And these could have no solution. They could have one solution. They could have two solutions. They could have four solutions. There's kind of all kinds of things that can happen. Yeah, blah, but... The good news is, like we described in the last video, that we don't need to new, know any new information, really. We're still going to just use either substitution or elimination methods. So that's the good news. But first, they want us to answer a few true or false questions here. And it's just going to be about, do we really understand what nonlinear systems are? The so first one, 1a, says, a solution of a nonlinear system in two variables, it's an ordered pair of real numbers that satisfies at least one of the equations in the system. Well, that's false. Because just like we saw in the last section, a solution should satisfy all equations in the system. Or both, I guess. In this case, it's both. But if there was ever a case in the future where you saw more than two, system, or more than two equations in a system, it would have to satisfy all of them. Satisfy all equations in a system. So that one's false for sure. Let's see, and then 1b here says, okay, true or false, the solution of a system of nonlinear equations corresponds to the intersection points of the graph in the system. Yes, that's true. Because like, that's kind of what we described over here, that if I were to try to find the, the solution to any of these three systems of nonlinear equations, I'd be looking for what are those points that are where they intersect, you know? So yeah, that's true. The solution of a system of nonlinear equations corresponds to the intersection points of the graphs. Yes, okay. The third one here, true or false, a system of nonlinear equations cannot contain a linear equation. That's also false. You know, that's something, I don't know if you might, you probably wouldn't have known that coming into this section, but like we kind of drew over here, like the the second and the third system of linear equations in these graphs, one of them's a line. So it's okay to have one of them be a line, but not both, because if both were lines, then we'd be back in the previous section, section 5.1. That's a linear system. So nonlinear just means you have to have one or the other. Only one equation need be nonlinear, I guess, in order for the whole system to be nonlinear. And then the last one here, we got true or false. The graphs of the equations in the nonlinear system could be a parabola and a circle. Yeah, true. Why not? Those aren't, I mean, as long as they're both not lines, and those aren't lines, so it's fine, yeah. Okay. I don't know why that one kind of threw me off. It just seems so specific. So objective two is we want to solve nonlinear systems by substitution. So that's nice that they're kind of telling us how. So we got this system here. What do we got? Um, so it's x plus 2y equals 0. This is actually a line, so this is linear. The second one, though, is not a line. That's a circle. We've seen those guys before. So now, remember the center was 1, 1. The radius is the square root of 5, yada, yada, yada. Okay. But it's kind of the same idea. I want to look at both of these equations. Okay, look at the variables. Here's x. Okay, here's 2y. Okay, so far so good. Here's this guy's x and here's this guy's y. Which of those four, four variables would be the easiest to solve for, to isolate? That's probably, that's what you're asking yourself now. So I want to say, okay, which of the four variables is easiest to solve for or isolate, I guess? And I'd say, for sure, neither of the variables in the second equation I would want to solve for. 
Because first of all, I'd have to get rid of the square, which would be really hard. I'd have to square root both sides. And not only square root both sides, but I'd have to put a plus or minus next to the square root. You know, that's, ugh, that's ugly. So I think for sure I'd take the top equation, x plus 2y equals 0, and either isolate x or y. I think x would be easier, like we said before in the previous video, because x has no coefficient. So I'm going to isolate x in the top equation. Isolate x. Okay, that sounds good. So x equals negative 2y. That's a good equation. x equals negative 2y. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to substitute that into the second equation that we haven't touched yet. Substitute into, okay, what was the second equation? Let me bring him down here. He was x minus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 5. All right. So according to the red equation that we wrote, x is equal to negative 2y. So I should be able to replace this x with negative 2y. That's the idea here. So let me rewrite this thing, but I'm going to leave x empty because he's being substituted or replaced. There it is. Okay, so where it was, I'm going to put the negative 2y because that's what x was equal to. There we go. And then I should be able to solve this, hopefully. Ooh, this is going to be bad. So I think what, oh, this is ugly. That's A lot of these end up being really ugly. This one's in particular. So I think it's like, okay, I might have a y stuck inside this parentheses, you know, and I have a y stuck inside this parentheses. I can't really, I have to, you know, combine all the y's or get them all together. And in order to do that, I need to get them out of the parentheses because they're stuck in there right now. But the reason that they're stuck is because there are these squares outside. So I think what I need to do is actually foil it out. I have to think of this this negative 2y minus 1 to the second power. That means negative 2y minus 1 times itself. So I have to actually foil that out. And then the same thing with this guy. y minus 1 to the second power means y minus 1 times itself. So I'm going to have to multiply all that stuff out and try to, you know, gather like terms. And oh, so you just got to be really careful. It's easy to make mistakes here. So if I foil this out, I'm going to get 4y squared plus 2y plus 2y plus 1. So that's what you get from foiling the first set of parentheses out. And then the second set of parentheses we foil and we get y squared minus y minus y plus 1. And then equals that 5. So you got to be really careful with your, with your terms here. The like terms I have are the 4y squared and the regular y squared can get together and make um, 5y squared. And we have a lot of regular y terms here. We have a 2y and 2y. Those together make 4y. But then we have minus y minus y. So we got 4y minus y minus y makes 2y. It's okay. Those all together make 2y. Let's see. So plus 2y. And then what about our constant terms here? We got this 1 and this 1 just get together and make a 2. All right. So we got all our like terms kind of put together here equals 5. But now I see, you know, we have we have y squared, a y squared term and a y term. So there's no way to just isolate y. I'm going to have to get everything on one side and try to factor. Factor or I guess if I have if I have no other choice, I'll have to use the quadratic formula. I would rather not, but hey, what are you going to do? Sometimes you have to do what you got to do. So I'll move this 5 over here, subtract 5. That way everything's on one side. 5y squared plus 2y, that would be, become minus 3, this guy and this guy, equals 0. And now I'm going to try to factor this. If this doesn't factor, I'll be very sad, but it's okay. I can use the quadratic formula. Let me see here. How would that work? Let's see. Na -na -na -na. I think 3 would be here. It would be negative, and this would be a plus 1. I think that's how it would work. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, it factors. All right. Yay. Okay. So once, now that I have it factored, I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. And that should give me two solutions. Okay. Oops, y plus 1. All right. I'm, I'm going to solve the left one here. I'll solve it by, let's see, adding 3 first to both sides. That way, 5y equals 3. And then I'll divide by 5 on both sides. So it looks like y is 3 fifths. That's not my favorite number in the world, but, you know, what are you going to do? The other one, though, since it's plus 1, I'll subtract 1 from both sides to isolate it. Okay, it looks like we have two y values, a 3 fifths and a negative 1. But remember that these actually are part of a point. You're supposed to have ordered pairs. So I'm not quite done with this problem. 
All I know is that there are a couple of solutions here. One of them has a y value of 3 fifths, and the other one has a y value of negative 1. So I know we have two points, and I know there are y values. I just got to find the x values. But that's actually not that bad. I just substitute into one of the original equations, one of those at a time. Um, so let me lo look back at the original equations. Which one was better? Ooh, definitely the top one, right? I like that guy a lot better. The bottom one is ugh. I mean, you should get the same solutions either way, but I would definitely like x plus 2y equals 0. x plus 2y equals 0. And actually, even better, you know, remember I took that guy and I solved for x. It was right here. So maybe I'll do that. I'll substitute into x equals negative 2y. Because like we mentioned in the previous section, that's usually the easiest place to substitute into. So okay, I'll do it for this one. Y will go in there. X equals negative 2 times Y. And then the same thing for this guy. X equals negative 2 times Y. So okay, in the first one, Y was 3 fifths. So that'll go in here. In the second one, Y was negative 1. Alright, let me simplify that. Well here, this first guy, if I put that 2 over 1, I'll multiply across. It'll be negative 6 fifths. So there's the x value that corresponds to a y value of 3 fifths. And this guy, negative 2 times negative 1 would be positive 2. So it looks like we have two solutions. One of them is really nice, 2 common negative 1. The other one's a couple fractions as their coordinates. That's not that nice. But I guess that's where they intersect. And like we said, this is a, a line in a circle, so it probably looks kind of like... Which picture that we drew? Oh, none of these. Well... You could draw a line in a circle, I guess, and you can imagine they would intersect at two points. Whew, so that's a lot of work. It's a lot of algebra. But I think if you kind of, you know, if you feel pretty good about all the previous algebra you've learned, then these aren't that bad. You just got to be really careful. Make sure you're doing all the steps right. You're not missing a negative or whatever. It's, it could really mess you up. Let's try this next one using substitution. So I want to look and say, which equation would be easier to isolate a variable in? Well, well... Actually, either one, I guess. You know, this one, it wouldn't be so bad to isolate x or y, but then again, this guy already has y by itself, so I think I'm just going to substitute, you know, y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4, since it already has a variable isolated, into the top equation, which doesn't quite have a variable isolated. It wouldn't be so bad to do it into that guy. So this is what y is equal to. I should be able to replace it here x plus y, whatever that is, equals 2. But y, from according to the other equation, y was equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4. All right. And, I, you know, I substituted and I put it in parentheses, but there's actually no real reason to have parentheses there. They don't really need to be there, so I'm just going to drop them. They would only need to be there if there was something in the front to distribute or in the back to distribute, but there's not... So let's see, the x squared doesn't have a like term, but the, the x and the 4x can get together. x minus 4x is negative 3x. And then plus this 4 here equals 2. Okay, now we want to get everything on one side and factor or use the quadratic formula. So it's a lot of times that's, that ends up to be what, what happens. So if I subtract that 2, then what am I left with here? x squared minus 3x plus 2. And oh, thank God, I think that factors, right? x minus 2, x minus 1, or vice versa. There we go. All right, and those are going to be nice whole numbers, which is nice compared to the last problem we did. I'll set each of those factors equal to 0 and then solve them separately. So that would just involve adding, so in this one, adding 2 to both sides. So x is 2, and then here I'll add 1 to both sides. That means x is 1, okay. So it looks like we have two solutions. One of the ordered pairs is going to have an x value of 2. It'll be 2 comma something. And the second solution is going to have an um, x value of 1, but we'll figure out what the y value is now. We're going to substitute each of these values, 2 and 1, separately into one of the original equations. And it, I mean, it doesn't really matter which one. It's up to you. I kind of like the top one better. or eh, meh, 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 meh. I don't know. You know, it doesn't matter. It's, this one's a toss-up. Actually, I kind of like the bottom one in a way, even though it's more complicated. Only because y is already isolated, which is nice. But the top one wouldn't be so bad either. I think, yeah, I don't know if there's one better than the other. I'll just go for it. So, okay, we're going y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. But in the first case, x is equal to 2. And in the second case, x is equal to 1. 
Okay, and those will be our new Y values, or the points. So there's two going to go into this one. Let's see, what'll that be? 4 minus 8 plus 4. That's 0, right? Okay. So that point is 2 comma 0. This guy we're substituting x equals 1. Okay, that's not so bad. That'll be y equals 1 minus 4 plus 4, so y equals 1. There we go. There's our values. 2 comma 0 and then 1 comma 1. So if you were to plot, or I guess graph these two equations, the original guys, this one's a line and this one's a parabola. If you were to graph those two, the intersection point of the, the parabola and the line are exactly at these two points. Whew, that was a hard work. I think the first problem was harder, huh? Probably should have led with the second problem because it was a little easier. All right, now we're going to do the second objective where we're going to solve these nonlinear systems. So they're still going to be nonlinear systems, but we're going to do it by addition or elimination, whatever you want to call it. Same thing. And I guess those only work if you have like terms, you know. So, for example, if I were to go back to the other objective, let me see those equations we started with. Um, where were they? Da, 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 da. So notice, um, if I were to try to use the elimination method on this guy, this x term and this x term, they're not like terms because this guy, the bottom one's going to have an x squared and the top one's not. Same thing with the y's. I have a y on the top. The bottom one's going to end up with a y squared. So it's it's kind of like this one doesn't does not lend itself to the elimination method because the, the equations don't really have like terms. And same thing with this guy, you know. I see an x on the top one, but there's not only an x on the bottom one, but there's also an x squared. So it's kind of, yeah, I guess if it's, it's like, if you have similar equations, then you can use the elimination method. But if you don't, I probably wouldn't. Like, these guys here are pretty similar. You see a lot of squares running around, so that would work. Although I'd say this one's substitution would be not so bad either, you know? Because it already has one of the, the, the equations isolating a variable. But oh well. I want to use the elimination method on this one, I guess, because that's what they told me to do. Method, okay. But that means I need to kind of have my like terms together, so... You know what I might do is actually undo what they did. They kind of isolated y on the first one, but I think I'm going to undo that. I'll move the x squared over. So it's negative x squared plus y equals 5. Okay, and that way, you know, you see the x and the y terms together, like in the second equation, x squared plus y squared equals 25. That way, yeah, you have your like terms lined up. You know, you have your x's here, your y's, your equal sign, and your, and your constant terms are your numbers here. So we're going to add these together, and notice the x squareds cancel. That's good. But then you have a y and a y squared. Those aren't like terms, so you're just going to have a y plus y squared on the left side. 5 and 25, though, on the right side actually do add up to 30 because they're like terms. So I guess, you know, it's like you have to have some kind of like terms, like the x squareds were like terms, but the y's weren't. That's okay, as long as one of the variables disappears. So that's, that's kind of one thing to note is y and y squared are not like terms. So it's not like you can say, oh, y plus y squared is y cubed or something. You can't combine them. The best you can do is just write them together on the same side of the equation. But the main thing is now at this point, we're left with an equation with only one variable. So we should be able to solve it, and we have to solve it just the same way as we've been doing. We have to get everything on one side and try to factor it. I think for the most part, these problems should always factor. Because I think they know. They try to make it so they'll factor, because these problems are already hard enough as it is without making you use the um, quadratic formula as well. But okay, that guy would factor into x plus 6, or sorry, y plus 6, y minus 5. And then I'll, like we did before, set each one equal to 0 and solve for y. Okay, this one, if I subtract 6 from both sides, it looks like negative 6 is that guy's y value. And here, if I add 5 to both sides, it looks like 5 is that guy's y value. So I'm going to, let's see, think about it. There should be one solution with a negative 6 as its y value, another solution as, with a 5 as its y value. To figure out the x values for those um, ordered pairs, though, I have to substitute those into one of the original equations, and it shouldn't matter into whichever one you think looks prettier. Let me see. Where are those guys? I guess the top one looks a little nicer. I don't know. It's a toss-up. I think neither one is really great, but I grabbed the top one. Y equals X squared plus 5. Okay, let's try that. Y equals X squared plus 5. So I'm going to rewrite that guy. Y equals 
x squared plus 5, but I'm putting a negative 6 for y there and a 5 for y here. All right. Let's try this. y equals... No! Oh, dang it. I'm trying to replace y. Hello. y, and the first one is a negative 6. Dang it. Negative 6. Here we go. So that guy's supposed to replace y. So this one, it's this is a little harder than I thought it would be to solve for x. I have to move the 5 over first. All right. So it's negative 11 equals x squared. But then notice, if I want to get x by itself, I have to get rid of that square. The only way to get rid of a square is to square root both sides. And first of all, you have to put a plus or minus next to the number. But that means x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 11, but that's imaginary. That means that actually there are no solutions that look like that. So I mean, there will be solutions, but they'll only come from this side. So that's kind of weird. It was like, I guess it was like y equals negative 6 was a false solution. So you got to watch out for that. Sometimes, especially when there are squares, like, um, you know, this problem started out with a lot of squares. x squared, x squared, y squared. A lot of times you'll end up getting fake solutions. And I think it's because of all the plus or minuses that pop up when you're trying to solve for x squareds and y squareds. But okay, let's try to substitute this value, 5, into this equation. So 5 equals x squared plus 5. There we go. All right, and then we'll solve this by trying to isolate x. Let me subtract 5 from both sides. That'll result in 0 equals x squared. And then I have to get the square out of there, so I'll have to square root both sides. That means x equals plus or minus the square root of 0, which is 0. But, you know, plus or minus 0 is just 0. There's no such thing as plus or minus 0. So, okay, that means there's only one solution, 0 comma 5. Interesting. So how'd that work? I mean, you know, so far I think we've seen only, the only solutions we've seen are two solutions. It's always been two. But let's see, this one, what kind of equations were these? The top one's a parabola, the bottom one's a circle. Okay, so the only, I think the way you'd see that, like, okay, a circle and a parabola only intersect at one point because we only got one solution. It's probably like, okay, the parabola goes right through the edge of the circle, you know? So it's, let's see, actually, what does this guy look like? He's, where are we? x squared plus 5, okay, so it looks like, oh, that's a parabola moved up 5, so it looks like that. 5, and then the circle, actually, it's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 5, so it's like, you know, that's why that's why there's only one solution, because they barely touch. Just the, the vertex of the parabola is on the, cir the circle, so that's their solution. 0, 5, yeah. So that's kind of why. Yeah, sometimes you'll get no solution, sometimes you'll get one, sometimes you'll get two. I think once you get to um, higher classes than this, um, you'll see maybe even four solutions. That's kind of ugly. God, I hope that doesn't happen here. Okay, let's try to use that same method, the sub, or sorry, the elimination method on this next one. This one actually might be a little easier because notice all the like terms are already lined up. You know, I have my x squareds, they're already above each other. The y squareds are above each other, the equal signs, the constant terms. I think I'm ready to just add these right now because the y's are going to cancel. It was a y squared and a negative y squared. Those cancel. But the x squared and the x squared make 2x squared. And then on the right side, I have 13 and 5 make 18. This one's actually a little nicer. And now I'm left with just one variable, so I should be able to solve for it now. Let me first divide by 2 on both sides. Then that would mean x squared equals 9. And as we've seen in the previous one, to get rid of a square, I have to square root both sides. That'll leave me with x equals, and I have to put plus or minus, of course. When you're trying to solve an equation, and you ins you put the plus or minus, or sorry, when you square root both sides of an equation, you have to put a plus or minus. So there's my x values. Okay, that means that there are at least two solutions. One of them has an x value of 3. One has an x value of negative 3. Well, let's try to find y now. There are y values. Find y values by substituting into, um, what are we substituting into here? Um, let's see, one of these original guys, I don't know. Is one of those really better than the other? I'm so petty that I say, oh look at on the bottom one, 5 is smaller than 13. <laughs> I know that's sad, but whatever, I'm going to do that. x squared minus y squared equals 5, okay x squared minus y squared equals 5. I'm going to plug 3 into that, and then x squared minus y squared 
equals 5. I'll plug negative 3 into that. So okay, first I'm going to look at when x is 3, and then when x is negative 3. So what if the 3 goes in there, and a negative 3 goes in there, what happens to y? Let's see, well, I think similar things are going to happen here. So here, if you're squaring 3, you're going to get 9. So 9 minus y squared equals 5. And then if I solve this all the way, let's see, I have to subtract 9 to the other side. Okay. You know what? I, sh I didn't leave myself a lot of room. Let me erase this big point that I made. 3 comma what? You know, I, I didn't leave myself enough room. Let me see. I'm going to move him lower, and I'm going to move this guy lower as well. Okay, looks good. So okay, I was move I moved the nine over. Now it's negative y by its or sorry, negative y squared by itself equals negative four. I have to get rid of the negative now, so I'll either multiply both sides by negative one or divide both sides by negative one. Either way, that just kind of makes both sides um, positive. Y squared equals four. And then the last step would be um, square root both sides. So I'll go square root, square root. But of course when you square root both sides of an equation, you have to put a plus or minus next to the numerical part, so it'll be y equals plus or minus 2. So that's kind of interesting. We haven't seen that yet, where a 1x value produced two different y values. That means instead of this being one solution, 3 comma something, you actually sprouted two solutions. They just both happen to have the same x value, but different y values. One's a 2 and one's a negative 2. So I think we're going to get almost like 4 for the price of 2 here. We thought we were going to have two solutions, you know, one with an x value of 3, one with an x value of negative 3, but actually we get two solutions with an x value of 3, and two probably with an x value of negative three. So I'm imagining something similar is going to happen over here. We're probably going to have a second solution. Um, but we're substituting negative three in, same kind of thing. But notice though, I'm the only difference here is I'm squaring negative three as, to squaring, as opposed to squaring positive three like in the last one. But either, either way, you actually end up with the same equation at this point. Because this nine minus y squared equals five, we actually ended up with that same thing here. So I, I mean, if I want to solve this, I'd do all the same steps. It'd be dot, 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 dot. Same steps. And I didn't end up with the same thing, y equals plus or minus 2. And that's only because this is the same exact equation I'm solving as here. So it looks like those are my solutions, 2 and negative 2. And these are all four different points. Because none of them have the exact same y value and the exact same x value. That's crazy, though, huh? Four solutions? Holy crap. That's pretty serious, you guys. I feel pretty accomplished, though, you know? Not only did I find one solution, I found four freaking solutions. What were we solving again? That guy... Okay, the top one's a circle, the bottom one's... Oh, a hyperbola. Well, we don't... We don't know what hyperbolas are yet, but... You know, if you're interested in, in it, how, it's like, well, what the hell would this look like for it to have four solutions? Well, the top one's a circle for sure, so he looks something like this. Some kind of radius, whatever, who cares? The bottom one's a hyperbola, which, like I said, I don't think we've studied yet, but it looks like, kind of looks like a parabola, but then there's another parabola. Look at that, it looks like a basketball court. Okay, don't get distracted, right? But that would be four solutions, because this kind of left green branch intersects twice, and the right green branch intersects twice. That's kind of what we're looking at here. Interesting. All right, you guys, that was fun. Maybe we'll try these uh, applications of this. This is where I'd say, dude, that was, that was like so out of left field, this crap. What the hell? When the hell would you use this in real life? Well, usually when people ask that and they find out the answer, they wish they never asked, you know? So here we go. This is one of those situations. Um, what's going to happen here is they're kind of going to describe a, a situation where we end up with a system of equations. One of, one of them or both of them are going to be not linear. But, you know, this, so this, this part, objective four, the hard part is trying to translate the English words into math symbols, you know, the equations. But the easy part is going to be solving them, because now we're experts after this section. So, okay, they say, find the length and the width of a rectangle whose perimeter is 20 feet and whose area is 21 feet. Well, let's see, perimeter of a rectangle is 2L plus 2W. That's kind of like the formula, you know, and that, you don't have to really memorize that. If you've ever, I know, you know a rectangle, if it has length, whatever, L, and width, W, that means this is L and this is W as well. And, you know, and the perimeter of a rectangle is just the length of all the sides added together. So let's say, I'll take this side, that's length L. I'll take this side, that's length W. I'll take this side, that's length L. And then I'll take the last side, that's length W. But with the like terms together, that's two L's and two W's. 
So that's, I don't know, that's the only... You don't have to memorize the perimeter formula if you don't want. Perimeter is 2L plus 2W, and then area... If you're using L and W, is um, L times W, or W times L, whatever. Base times height, length times width, whatever the hell you want to call it. But they're telling us that the perimeter is 20, so I should be able to replace the P for perimeter with 20. And then same thing for the area. The area is 21, so I'll replace the A and the area formula with 21. But that gives us a system of equations here. It's like, okay, the first equation is 20 equals 2L plus 2W. The second one is 21 equals L times W. But now, this, I guess the, what makes this hard is I'm kind of left to my own devices because they didn't say solve this using substitution or solve this using elimination. But I think it's pretty clear for me, I have to use um, substitution because elimination wouldn't work here. Imagine trying to add these equations together they don't have like terms, because the bottom one has an L times a W. I don't see an L times a W on the top. So that, I think, yeah, elimination won't work because there are no like terms going on here. Won't work. No like terms. And if there are no like terms, you have no hope of eliminating X, or sorry, X or Y, L or W, whatever. So I think we're going to have to use uh, substitution. And this one's a toss-up. You could... um. Hmm. It wouldn't be so bad to isolate L or W in either equation. But I think probably your safest bet is if one of them is linear like this guy, then I think that's going to be the easiest one. So I think I will isolate either L or W. doesn't really matter in that top one. What do you think? L? Sure, why not? L. And 20 equals 2L plus 2W. It doesn't matter if you isolate W. It would be the same thing. All right, let's see. So I'm going to do that off to the side here. How the hell would I do that? Let me see. Let me bring this guy down. 20 equals 2L plus 2W. Well, if I want to get L by itself, I'll move the 2W over. So subtract 2W. That way it's 20 minus 2W equals 2L. And then the last step would be just divide both sides by 2 to get rid of that 2 in front of the L. Divide by 2. But that means I have to divide all the terms by 2. But that's kind of nice because it makes all the terms simpler looking. 20 divided by 2 is 10. Here the 2's cancel, just leaving the W. Same thing with the L. So that's what I want to substitute. So I'm going to substitute L equals 10 minus W, that guy, into the equation we haven't touched yet, which is this 21 minus, or sorry, 21 equals LW. So what would that look like? Let's see here. I'm just going to rewrite this guy. 21 equals... It's L. L is being replaced here because L is what we have solved on the first one. So this stuff, 10 minus W is going to go right here where that L was. 10 minus W. But the second W, the one that was multiplying by the L, that guy is going to stay. It's just that this used to be an L before. So that's what we're trying to solve now. Oh my gosh. Ah, you know what? I got room down here, huh? All right, it's 21 equals, and I think I'll distribute this W in here just to kind of get rid of any parentheses. 10 times W, and then W times W would be W squared. All right, and now I need to solve this equation for W, but since I see a W squared and a W, I need to get everything on one side and factor. And I know it would be easier to move the 21 to the right side, but then my leading term would be negative, the W squared, so I think... In order to factor, you want to have your leading term or the one with the highest power be positive. So I think just in that, you know, in that uh, spirit, I'm going to move everything to the left side, actually, so that way the, the leading term, w squared, will be positive. The positive w squared and then minus 10w plus that 21 that was already there. Oh, please tell me this factors. Oh, thank God. 3 and 7. w minus 3, w minus 7. Because those numbers multiply to 21, but they add up to negative 10. There we go. So we're going to get two W solutions here. If I set the first factor equal to zero, I'll get three. If I set the second factor equal to zero, I'll get seven. All right, but then I need to find the L value for those guys. So let me move this stuff all the way up so I have more room. Okay. You know that W is three on one hand and W is seven on the other hand. So substitute those guys into one of the original equations. I don't know which one's better. Actually, the second one's kind of nice, huh? It's not that bad. I don't think I'll do that. 
Although, like we said before, it shouldn't matter. You're going to get the same solution either way. I'm going to substitute into 21 equals LW. Okay. There we go. So it's 21 equals L times W, but I have a W value to substitute in. Same thing over here. Let's see, on the left, the W value I want to substitute is 3. And on the right, this W value I want to substitute is 7. So I have to solve each one. Let's see. I can, and I can simplify that. That's 21 equals L times 3 or 3 times L, whatever. To solve that all the way, I'll divide both sides by 3. It looks like L is 7. Okay, how about here? This is 21 equals... I can write that as 7L. If I divide both sides by 7, L is 3. So it's kind of like L and W switched values. So it's either... On one hand, the width is 3 and the length is 7. That's the solution we got on the left, or the width was 7, and the length was 3. That's something... But I think that that's kind of... I guess that's like the same rectangle, right? Like, that means that the width um, was small here, it was 3, and the length was 7. Or it was just like this exact same rectangle turned uh, 40... no, 90 degrees, right? So technically it's the same rectangle, but... Blah, 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 yeah, finally... <laughs> yeah. So I guess there are two solutions. It kind of depends if you count these as two different rectangles. I think they probably would, so I'd say that these are your solutions. It's like um, the width being 3, the length being 7 on one hand. That's one solution. And the other one would be the other way around. W is 7 and L is 3. So you got, yeah, two solutions there. Even though, you know, to me I think it seems like that's only one solution because that's the same rectangle in disguise. But mathematically, I guess that's two different ones. All right, I think this last problem that we're going to do in this section is very similar to the previous one. It's just now there's no, I guess, context as far as shapes and geometry goes. They're saying the sum of two numbers, okay, i got to give those numbers a name. Let's say just whatever your favorite variables are. And we use x and y a lot, so I'm going to say the numbers are x and y, okay. Well, if they said the sum of the two numbers is 10, well, remember sum means add. So that means that when you add them together, x plus y, you get 10. So I guess that, you know, that you, but what we highlighted with yellow, that um, statement, is going to give us this equation. And I think the other one, where it says their product is 24, that'll give us a second equation. Product means multiply, so it'd be x times y equals 24. Um, or you could write just x, y. Okay. Looks good. All right. And you know, at this point, you could maybe guess the answer. A lot of times at this point, you just think, what kind of numbers add up to 10, but they have a product of 24? But really, here you, we want to see the algebra. See the... So it's not like, the point here is not actually finding those numbers. It's more like, that's just an excuse for us to see you do these problems, and, you know? So definitely, when you you know taking a quiz or an exam or something, if you can guess the answers, You'll definitely see the phrase, show your work. Because we know that a lot of times you can guess the answer, but that's not the point. The point is the algebra. You're supposed to be learning algebra, not numbers. This, this problem, who gives a crap what the sum of two numbers is? Yeah, like I said, it's just an excuse to solve a system. But this system is similar to the last one in that we can't use elimination because there are no like terms. We're just going to have to use substitution. So I think we'll kind of do a similar thing. I think it would work either way. But I think it's easier to take the linear guy, which is the top guy, and solve it for either x or y. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I just say, I guess the one on the left is the one I'll solve for. I don't know. So I'll take the top one, x plus y equals 10, and I'll solve for x. So that means I want to move the y over. So it'll be x equals 10 minus y, or negative y plus 10, whatever you want to write. And whatever I get there, that's, yeah, 10 minus y. That'll be substituted into x on the first equation, or sorry, not the first equation, the one that we haven't touched yet, the second one. It was x times y equals 24. x times y equals 24, but where that x was, I'm going to put 10 minus y. So get, get rid of x and put a 10 minus y there instead. All right, this is what we really want to solve. Now we have, have one variable, so should, we should be able to solve this. But I have to distribute this y first. 10 times y would be 10y minus y times y is y squared. All right, and I think we're in, we're in a similar boat to the previous one. 
I want to get all the terms on one side and factor, but the leading term right now is negative, which will make it really hard to factor. So I'm going to actually going to move the left terms to the right as opposed to that one right term to, to the left. It just ensures that your leading term will be positive, and then that way you'll have an easier time factoring. There's nothing on the left side. The right side now, if I write it in descending order of powers, it becomes y squared minus 10y plus 24. And that factors into y minus 6, y minus 4, or vice versa. And if you set each of those factors equal to 0, x mi or y minus 6, y minus 4, you get 6 and 4. Which you probably guessed those answers when you read the problem, you know? You said, okay, what kind of numbers add up to 10 but multiply out to 24? If you just kind of go through the options in your head, what kind of numbers add up to 10? You're going to eventually get to the right ones if you just keep thinking about it or guessing. But like I said, the point is to do the algebra. But to find the x values that go with those guys, we're going to substitute into either of the originals. But I guess x times y equals 24 is kind of nice looking. So on one hand, I have y equals 6. I'll put that in there. On the other hand, I have y equals 4. So I'll put those both in this guy xy equals 24. And I think we're going to get a really similar thing to the previous one happening. So if y is 6, I'll put a 6 for y. So it's x times 6 equals 24. Or 6x equals 24. If I divide both sides by 6, I get 4 for x. Alright, fair enough. And then the other one, I'm putting a 4 for y. So it's 4x equals 24. And if I divide both sides by 4, I get 6. So it was like the x and y value switched, huh? It's either x is 4, y is 6, or vice versa, x is 6, y is 4. Either way, I think, and yeah, it seems like those are the same solution because it said find two numbers that do this. Well, it's 4 and 6, or 6 and 4. Either way, but there it is. It's simil yeah, similar to the previous one. But that was fun. We'll have more fun in the, ne the next section, I promise. Good times.